Will we ever know for a fact? Will we have evidence from Barry Bonds that yes, he in indeed took steroids? Yeah, your hat then. size is not supposed to grow. Your shoe size isn't supposed to grow two or three sizes. And you're not supposed to go at age 38 from a lifetime batting average of 290 and all of a sudden hit 370 and 360. Yeah, no. Did you ever use any other banned substances like testosterone, uh, cortisone, or human growth hormone? Yes. It is the actual fountain of youth. Human growth hormone, one of the rare drugs that everybody seems to be using, from legends like Barry Bonds and Lance Armstrong to even the anti-aging crowd. I'm an advertiser's dream. You give me a product that's going to make me younger, I'm going to try it. And I was like, oh my god, if Debbie Moore's using it. Unlike some of the other performance enhancing drugs we've covered, this one is often prescribed by doctors for patients recovering from traumatic injuries or surgeries. You know, you tear a bicep, you have surgery to repair it, growth hormone for eight weeks, fosters rehabilitation better than if you did nothing. So is HDH the real deal and do the benefits outweigh the risks in this case? Or is there more beyond the surface? Let's take a closer look and find out what all the fuss is about. I'm Marco, a former weightlifter turned doctor and pharmacology researcher. Join me as I do deep dives on the medications that I find fascinating. HGH is a peptide hormone that is naturally produced by the pituitary gland. It functions in the body by promoting growth and cell regeneration, exerting its effects by binding to receptors throughout the body in muscle, bone, and fat tissue. In the muscles, HGH causes hypertrophy, which is an increase in the size of the cells, just like anabolic steroids but also it causes hyperplasia, which is an increase in the number of cells. This ability to not only repair and build existing tissue, but grow new tissue makes HGH extremely unique. But it also carries a risk for deregulating cellular death and has the potential to cause severe side effects like cancer, which we'll touch on later. What benefits have you noticed? Energy, have so much energy. My skin is so much better, my hair, I lose weight, my nails. It's just like the Peter Pan drug. You know? Some of the reasons why people love HGH for its anti-aging effects are also why it's so prevalent amongst athletes, especially when recovering from injuries. Hair, skin, and nails are uncoincidentally made from similar connective tissues such as ligaments, tendons, and cartilage, and HGH promotes the growth of all of them. The three components are collagen, hyaluronic acid, and elastin. Collagen is a protein that's a key component of the connective tissue in our body. It is the most abundant protein in mammals, accounting for about 30% of total protein content. Its main function is to provide structural support and strengthen the body's tissues. Hyaluronic acid is a long chain of sugars that helps to retain moisture in tissues. It can hold up to 1,000 times its weight in water, making it an important component of hydration and elasticity. It's also commonly injected in cosmetic procedures to fill out wrinkles or lips. Finally, elastin is a protein that's found primarily in elastic tissues, such as cartilage, tendons, and ligaments. Elastin helps to provide flexibility and elasticity to these tissues, allowing them to absorb shock and withstand the stresses of movement. Great skin, joints, hair, that sounds great. But even our anti-aging friend's favorite benefit seemed to be energy. Energy, energy, energy. <laughs> Every patient I've prescribed it to, they all say, I've never felt better, which then helps me understand why this cottage industry of doctors out there exists who run longevity clinics prescribing growth hormone. So here's how HEH gives you energy and makes you lean and jacked. But before we start, if you're enjoying this video, please subscribe and drop a like. They're free. HGH stimulates the metabolism of fat through three main pathways. It activates hormone-sensitive lipase, which is an enzyme that breaks down fat tissue into free fatty acids. By activating hormone-sensitive lipase, growth hormone increases the amount of energy available from fat. Lipoprotein lipase, on the other hand, promotes the uptake of fatty acids into fatty tissue. HGH decreases the activity of lipoprotein lipase, which reduces the uptake of fatty acids into fat tissue for storage. In addition to these two hormones, HGH also stimulates the production of thyroid hormone. Thyroid hormone plays a key role in regulating the body's metabolic rate and energy expenditure, including the breakdown and utilization of stored fat. In terms of hypertrophy, HGH stimulates the production of insulin-like growth factor 1, which together increase protein synthesis and muscle growth. Growth hormone also increases the activity of satellite cells, which are responsible for repairing and regenerating damaged muscle tissue. As we mentioned earlier, HGH also has the ability to promote hyperplasia, or the formation of new muscle fibers. 
This is thought to occur through a process called myogenesis, which involves the differentiation of satellite cells that we mentioned earlier into new muscle fibers. How do we keep HGH out of here? And the doctor was like, you can't, it's impossible. <laughs> You know, growth hormone is the most abused drug in all of sports because we don't have a test for it. Detecting the difference between natural growth hormone and exogenous growth hormone can be very difficult. In recent years, new methods of HGH detection have been developed. However, these methods are not consistently used, and this is a reason why many athletes still to this day use HGH. Unfortunately, what goes up must come down, and messing with hormones always has some side effects. So let's break down the potential risks of HGH going from mild to severe. Because HGH causes growth of connective tissue, it can cause an overgrowth of cartilage and bone, leading to pain and stiffness. This can lead to diseases like carpal tunnel syndrome and osteoarthritis, and is also the reason why Barry Bonds' hat size and shoe size grew throughout his career. As we saw in our trend video, messing around with IGF-1 regulation carries a risk for developing metabolic diseases like diabetes. HGH can interfere with insulin signaling in the body, leading to insulin resistance and impaired glucose uptake. Just like growth hormone stimulates the muscles to grow, it also stimulates the growth of smooth muscles in blood vessels, leading to arterial thickening and increased blood pressure. This can also increase the risk of thrombosis and atherosclerosis, which can lead to an increased risk for heart attack or stroke. And unfortunately, the same is true for cancer cells. HGH and IGF-1 together can lead to uncontrolled cell growth and the development or acceleration of cancer. Several studies have suggested that high levels of IGF-1 in the body may increase the risk of certain types of cancer, like breast, prostate, or colorectal cancer. This is supported by observations that individuals with acromegaly, a condition characterized by excessive production of HGH and IGF-1, have an increased risk for these cancers. However, these people experienced a lifetime increase of HGH, and in reality, it's dependent on multiple factors. On this one, I tend to agree with Dr. Peter Atia. I don't believe in the literature that would suggest that prescribing growth hormone is a pro-longevity tool. But if I'm being brutally honest, I can't tell you that it's killing you either. I can come up with theoretical arguments why prescribing growth hormone is going to make you feel better, but is going to shorten your life but I don't really see any data one way or the other. And even when you look at extreme cases, which are basically athletes, you'd think that the, the, the morgue 